Hello everyone, this is Mike, and today we're going to go through how to create a team for Pro Strategy Football 2021. And uh, the method I'm going to explain to you uh, in a very basic rudimentary way can be done for any kind of sports game. Uh, regardless of its genre. It could be baseball, it could be basketball, it could be hockey. But I'm going to do an example uh, to try to allow everyone to get the feel of what it takes to make a team or a league or what have you. <clears throat> now, you'll see the Pro Strategy Football game. And behind it, you are going to see uh, a whole bunch of text files and what these are are examples of the 1985 Bears. That's who we are going to be building today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you text files from four different football simulations to show you how they have the 1985 Bears or any given team organized. So for starters, we're going to go to this first text file. And this is the 1985 Bears from the old XOR game, NFL Challenge. And you'll see that this game is asking for data on not just their starting lineup. Um, and you scroll down, you'll see special teams where I'm moving my mouse. Can you see me? I don't know if you can see me moving my mouse. Okay. Uh, and the various substitutes. And what they want is the position height, weight, years, speed, and I've read the documentation, they're asking for the 40 yard dash, uh, a run rating, a receive rating, a block rating, which is for, for running or passing, a pass rating and a kick rating. And this is blanket for every single player on their roster. Uh, they also do have in the far left their jersey numbers. So, and I do know that uh, NFL Challenge has a rating system of 50 to 99 for everybody. And their logic was it's anybody can make a play, so it's 50-50 that you're going to make the play. And 99 is the maximum because nobody's perfect. That was their logic, and that was in their documentation. But you'll see that as I scroll down towards the bottom where it says substitutes, you'll also see after Tyrone Keys, number 98 Tyrone Keys, there are one, two, three, four players named filler player. This is because the 85 Bears did not have enough players on their roster to complete the roster set that NFL Challenge had. So they made generic players to fill in those spaces, and you can see they're all the exact same. They're all offensive linemen, 6'6", six 265, six, 9 years experience, 5-yard dash in 5 seconds, and the only rating they have is the blocking rating, which is a 76, and they're all jersey number 71. It's just made up. It's just to fill the space. So that's... And the reason I'm showing you all this is because every every single game has a different way their engine is constructed and their database is constructed. So whatever game you're going to make a team for, you have to know the game. Uh, it's And sometimes it's going to be pulling your hair out, figuring out exactly how the game has it set up and how you can utilize the information you have for the team that you want to build into their game. Think of it this way. Um, hello. Uh, I, I, I want to pronounce your name. Elo Mint. I, if, if I pronounced it wrong, your handle, I apologize. Uh, I hope all the developers enhancing this game, I love to see ratings from 1 to 100 instead of 1 to 10, would allow better differentiation among historical teams and players, and player photos more subs. Well, that's something we're going to get into, the rating system of 1 to 9 and 1 to 99 or 100. That's one of the things I'm going to discuss here. Uh, but I will say uh, your request for player photos and more subs. Two things are in the works. Uh, and they were attempted last year, but there was no time. I do know for Pro Strategy Football, uh, the programmer is now able to work on a 53-man roster. 
So because of that, there will be more subs as a possibility. Uh, in reference to photos, that was being looked at last year, but he ran out of time. Uh, he is looking to give everyone the option of adding their own photos for all the respect of players. It's a matter of how he's going to implement it at this time. He doesn't know yet, but he want, and he's had this idea for a while. When you click on a player, it's going to give all their stats uh, in the given season, and if you're doing a career league in the past as well, uh, all the ratings and statistics, if they have it, depending on the player, and a picture of the player that you put in yourself. So it is something he wants. He calls it a player card, like a bubblegum card. Um, so he wants that as well. So uh, that is something uh, that's being looked into the next for next year's version. He didn't have time. It's just uh, Kerry Batts, is, it's, he's, he's doing it by himself, and he's got some beta testers that uh, he'll – you know, send betas out and try to get rid of bugs and uh, beta testers will throw them new ideas. And I know that Kerry also listens to the community. Uh, he wants to get everything possible in here that everybody wants, but it's just him and it's time consuming and he's got a full-time job. So he, you know, he's got to look out for himself first. But uh, back to this, what you're looking at again, this is the way it's set up for NFL Challenge. Now, the next one I'm going to show you is, this is from, let's see who remembers this. This is from Micro League Football 2. This is the 85 Bears from Micro League Football. This is how their game wants information uh, for their rosters. Notice they only list two quarterbacks. They don't list three or more. It's etched in stone. You have only two quarterbacks in this game. And the only th and this is one of those number cruncher games that does have some ratings. Uh, you'll see that they're looking for pass attempts and completions and percentage. And if I remember the game correctly, if you entered in the completion and percentages, it automatically calculates the uh, percentage. So if you were to type in Jim McMahon, you would put in 313 attempts, 178 completions, and it will automatically go, I'm doing the math, that's 56.9. You put in the yards, uh, passing touchdowns, interceptions, and interception percentage that might auto-calculate. If not, you have to look it up. So that's what that engine wants. Um, and there's also uh, sack percentage, uh, run average, and sack, per uh, and um, pardon me, scramble percentage, run average, and sack percentage. So you're going to want to put in those numbers. A thing, though, in reference to statistics like that, you can do the math on a sack percentage. You can look up how many times the quarterback attempted to pass the ball and how many times the quarterback was sacked. And then you have to go into a calculator and do the math yourself because it very well may not be listed on any web page when it comes to t statistics. And they may have just made this number up because they were using, back in the day, older books. And I remember using those same books. Um, it was funny going through those same books and... Um, finding and um, uh, uh, seeing they enter the exact same data in the books. If anybody remembers um, Super Bowl Sunday, uh, if you had the 77 Broncos, it listed the quarterback completion percentage for Morton as 49%. In real life, it was 59. Um, there was a book, I can't remember the name of it, I no longer have it because everything's online now, so just get it offline. But I had the same book apparently that they did because there was a typo in that book that said he threw 49%. In reality, it was 59 So uh, it's kind of funny that those same gaming companies were using the same off-the-shelf books apparently uh, that a lot of us uh, did when making, uh, when, when, uh, making these kind of teams. Uh, but you'll see the running backs, the information you want, and you'll see they have a halfback, a fullback, and two extra running backs. That's it. You'll see William the Refrigerator Perry is not listed because there wasn't room for him. But you, you see what they're looking for, the rush attempts, rush yards, and I believe that would auto-calculate for you. You didn't have to type in 4.8 for Peyton for his run average. Um, uh, so, and some of these, some of these, uh, numbers that they're asking for you know there is no statistic for it that you're going to be fine readily available you may have to do the math on it yourself or you're gonna to have to make something up and there's no two ways around it um 
So if you look at the field goal kicker, Butler, um, under 20, 99, under 30, 99, under 4 to 80, under 50, 78, 50 plus, 33, extra point, he made 99%. He might have really made 100, but the game's limited to 99, so you're stuck putting a 99. That's common. Uh, it does not list his long. Some games do list long. Um, and punter, uh, the number of punts, yards, average, block punts, and inside the 20. Inside the 20, you may not be able to find statistics for back then. We'll, we'll look when we look up their, their stats, but you have to make something up because the game's asking for it. That's what this engine wants. So you have to make it up. If it doesn't exist, you just you have no choice. Um, punt and kick returns, they want the attempts, uh, the average, and the long. And then you've got their offensive line set up and their ratings, and they use a base of 1 to 5. I remember the game, they use a base of 1 to 5. And how did they come up with these numbers? Well, there are no statistics for offensive linemen, so they use their best judgment. That's all they have to go on. Uh, same thing with the defense. Um, sack, I think this is not the number of sacks. I think this is a rating on a scale of 1 to 5. That's what this game wants. Uh and look at the number of defensive linemen. You've got one, two, three, four, five. You've got it set up where they go between a three, four, four, three on the line. And you've got one backup. That's it. Uh, linebackers, it may say offense, uh, outside and inside linebackers, but one of these inside linebackers, and it should be Singletary, would be if you went with a 4-3. I just know this from the, the design of the game. You can say 4-3, it takes Rivera out, and it's just going to be Wilson, Singletary, and Marshall. And they had two backups, and that's it. You're limited to 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 linebackers. You have to have 6. You can't have more than 6. That's the way that game is built. So again, whenever you're making these things, you need to know how the game, the um, the database is constructed for the team and you also are going to have to when it comes to the ratings understand how their engine works and the best way of understanding it is there, there are two things you can ask the programmers or, and or you're just going to have to kick the tires on it and and tweak it as you go and it can take time uh, defensive backs one two three four You've got four, and then you've got somebody for nickel and dime, and the, you know, and that's it. There are no real backups um, um, out after the dime. So you are stuck with two corners, two safeties, and two extra defensive backs that can go somewhere else. And they're just using ratings. They're not using interceptions or sacks. They're use, using ratings, and they're made up. Uh, they're just the programmers just use their best guess. Now you'll see down here below. It's this on the bottom. It says team factors. Uh, this is common with number crunchers, and uh, what they're saying is it's a general perspective of what a team's offense or defense did as a whole. Uh, so defensive run average. Defensive run average is 3.7. What they're saying is on average, whoever they were playing uh, in their season, all the teams – those teams averaged 3.7 yards a carry. And this is this is a number that's going to be available normally uh, online, and we will get to that. Uh, they're looking for defensive completion percentage. That means what completion percentage did the Bears defense allow versus in as a whole versus what they were their 16 offensive opponents did in the regular season. And these numbers typically are regular season numbers. Playoffs don't play into the equation um, interception percentage how often did the Bears intercept the ball so out of a hundred passes they're going to intercept it seven times and this is something that's either available or you can do the math on and we will get to that defensive sack percentage how many times when they uh, are going after quarterback are they sacking the quarterback eight out of a hundred uh, defensive penalty percentage 13 out of a hundred plays they're going to get called for a penalty. Mind you, I will say, and I've seen this in other games, when it asks for the penalty percentage, it's for the entire team, offense and defense, uh, because I believe that's all that's readily available. So in reality, the penalty percentage is both offense and defense. Defensive yards per completion, 
that means they're allowing 13.3 yards completion against all the 16 teams they played. And again, that's a number that's going to be statistically available. We will get to that. Uh, red zone rating on offense and defense. How well the Bears were scoring in the red zone on a scale of 1 to 5, and the programmers made them a 5. Defensive red zone rating. This has to do with how well their defense held on a scale of 1 to 5. And they were also a 5, top notch. <clears throat> Excuse me. Defensive fumble percentage and offensive fumble percentage. This is how often their defense caused fumbles where the offensive fumble percentage, it's not, it's, it's yeah, excuse me, is how often the offense as a whole, not a specific player as a whole, fumbled the ball. So in this case, they're saying two out of 100 plays, the Bears had a fumble, and their defense caused a fumble three out of 100. Now, are these actual correct statistics that are listed online now because this game was made in the 80s and i'm not criticizing micro league football but it might not be some of these may be made up because uh, those kind of statistics weren't always readily available i'm not saying they're not right i'm just saying that older games like that from my experience uh building stuff when i was building stuff in the 80s uh they may not be correct uh because of the limited amount of data that was freely available. All right, uh, so that is Micro League Football 2. Um, this is NFL Pro League Football 95. This is the Bears. And you will see that they have a bunch of slots. And they're asking for more statistical information than was listed before uh, with Michael League Football 2. So we'll look at running back number one, Walter Payton, 324 uh, attempts. You'll see yards per run, it says 48. The decimal in this game is an understood. So it's an understood it's going to be a 4.8, but you would type in 48 with this game engine. The long was 40 yards, nine touchdowns. He had 49 catches. Yards per catch, 10. That is not by decimal point. That is rounded up for this engine. Again, you need to know the engine of the game, how the database works, and how the game will use this to spit out a result for you. Two, two receiving touchdowns. He fumbled the ball six times, and his blocking rating from 0 to 9 is a 5. So you have all of the running backs listed here. And I can tell you from these games, these NFL Pro League football games, Running back number one is always a halfback. Running back number two is always a fullback. The rest are by how many attempts they had. So if you were doing a team like the Miami Dolphins from the 70s, the running back number two is going to be Larry Zonka, even though he carried the most, because number two is a slot specifically made for a fullback. Now you've got your wideouts. Um, and these are in the order of receptions which you'll see catches in the middle on the on the very beginning it says attempt that's a rushing attempt in case they actually ran the ball like on an end around for example so mckinnon had one rushing attempt that averaged one yard but he scored excuse me he got and that was his long one yard willie galt had five and he averaged 3.6 remember the decimals and understood in this engine for a maximum of 11 and no touchdowns then you go where it says see it's catches so McKinnon had 38 catches. He averaged 18 yards a catch. 48 was his long. He had seven touchdowns. He had one fumble, and his block rating is a one out of nine, from zero to nine. And again, the block rating is an opinion. Tight ends. Two, there were two tight ends that caught passes here. Uh, Moorhead had 35, and Reitman had 34. Quarterbacks. In this game, you can have up to four. Statistically, they had three quarterbacks that threw the ball, McMahon, Fuller, and Tom Zack. So you actually get all three quarterbacks that actually did throw in the game. Now, uh, and they have, um, the first set of numbers are not them throwing the ball, it's rushing. So McMahon had 47 rushes, averaging 5.4. Again, the decimals are understood. 19 was as long, and had three touchdowns. 
attempted 313 passes, completed, and this is rounded up, 57%. He had 11 interceptions. He averaged 13 yards per, per catch. He was sacked 26 times, and he fumbled 4% of the time, and that's a percentage. Now, you get to offensive linemen. The way the game was constructed, it goes center, left guard, right guard, left tackle, right tackle, and all the backups. And they listed all of the offensive linemen that they had. There's a blank one, means nobody was there. But run and pass rating on a scale of 100, these are all opinion. There is no such thing as a statistic for an offensive lineman. These are all opinion. Defensive lineman, if you go to the right of offensive lineman, same principle. It will go right end, uh, then right tackle or nose tackle, left tackle, left end, and then all the various backups. Now, you will see the run and pass rating. Again, that's opinion. And the actual number of sacks each player had and the actual number of interceptions the players had. Now, you will notice that when it gets to number 42, it's blank, and then number 43 and 44, there are fill-ins. Well, what that engine did was if they didn't have a certain amount of defensive linemen, it would pull from, if you go down below offensive linemen, there's linebackers, it would pull from their linebackers, and they could make them defensive linemen. That was just a neat thing that the uh, the gaming database did. Uh, then you have linebackers, and they actually start left to right um, in the same run, pass, sacks, interception numbers. Defensive backs on the right, I believe it starts with the two corners left and right, then strong for safety and free safety. Uh, kick returners, you can have up to four that actually had actual statistics. And all they're looking for is average, average, uh, attempts, average, um, and the long, and if they scored a touchdown or not. The number, not a percentage, the number of touchdowns. Uh, field goal kicker, all they're looking for is extra points attempted and made, uh, field goal attempted and made, and the field goal long. Uh, they're not going off of a percentage inside the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, what have you. Um, punters. They're asking for attempts average, the punter's long, what percent it was blocked, and how many times inside the 20. Miscellaneous. There are three miscellaneous setups in this engine. Um, the first number is um, uh, the offensive formation, the default formation. And there is uh, a, a series of formations that the game came with, and the, the formations were defined by numbers. I believe one was a pro set. I could be wrong. I have to. You can look it up. Defensive formation is the second number. They went with a 4-3. 3-4 four, three. Three, four was a number one. 4-3 is a number two. Yards per rush average, 3.7. Again, this is like that micro league thing. They're, the, the, and that was 3.7. So that's what they're looking for. Touchdowns allowed by, a, by opponents running the ball. It doesn't say running, but that's what it is. Touchdowns that the Bears allowed in 16 regular season games, the number of touchdowns they allowed rushing. They allowed six in 16 games. Uh, completion percentage, they only allowed 48% completion percentage on their defense. Intercept, intercept perception, the same. Sack, the same. The passing along, they allowed, they allowed a 90-yard pass. Um, interception average, this, what they want for that is Whenever the Bears intercepted the ball, as a team, what was the average the uh, defender, the average yards the defender had returning the ball? That's what that engine wants. Uh, now, under miscellaneous two, interception long. The longest the Bears returned an intercept, interception was 90 yards. Okay, uh, yards per catch average. This is the average that... Um, Defensively, they allowed, which was 13 uh, yards per average catch. Kick return and uh, kick return long. Kick return average return. Their def their special teams allowed an average kick return of 23. Their long was 58. Same for punt return. They average they allowed an average of nine. They had a long of 29. Home uh, record and road record. This is a percentage. The Bears won all of their home games. That's why they're at 100 percent. They lost one road game, so 7 out of 8 is 88%. And total win percentage out of all their games is 94. 
Penalty percentage is how often the team was penalized according to this game, and it's 5%. Um, the rest have to do, if I remember correctly, with their stadiums, their weather settings, um, their uniforms, what uniforms to pick out of the database. Um, and um, that sort of thing. So, that I mean, this is... This is again. This is asking for completely different data than anybody else. So everybody asks for different kind of data. Now the last one I'm going to call up. This is uh, second and ten. <coughs> excuse me, second and ten. This is what they list, and I'm I'm not going to go nuts over it because I've taken up a lot of time here. But this is what second ten <coughs> is looking for. If you were build a team with them, they're looking for miscellaneous information up here. Uh, they allow, I know that this is a games engine, they don't have Tom Sack listed because uh, they will list uh, players with statistics, but they have to have enough statistics for the game to warrant them to be in it in the first place. So because Tom Zack, according to the way second and ten is set up, threw so few passes, they don't even have him as a quarterback option. Um now, um, if you look at a Peyton Manning run team from the 2000s, a lot of them for second and 10, the only quarterback listed is Peyton Manning, period, because he literally was the only one who threw balls or his backup may have thrown so few that second and 10 doesn't even want that as, as data. That's just the way the engine and the, the database is set up for second and 10. Again, this is not a criticism of any game. I'm just explaining to you what second and 10 wants and every single sports sim wants different things. Uh, running backs, uh, again, some of these are numbers and some of these are ratings. Some of these have ratings based off the numbers. Like for example, uh, catches per game. Uh, Moorhead had an average of two catches per game. Willie Galt had two. Dennis McKinnon had two. Tim Reitman had one to two and Ken Martram had one. If you go up to the running backs, you'll see the same thing. Peyton had an average of three a game. Suey had two. Um, zero to one for Gentry and Thomas. And for Sanders and Perry, it says S, that's one catch per season. They had one catch like the whole year is what they're going to average in this game. So you're not, so the, the, the game engine is not going to throw to them except for one time the entire year if they throw to them at all. So they have different sets of uh, statistics and ratings. And um, see, they list on the defensive ends. They've got four defensive ends, three defensive tackles, uh, and that's it. Um, and they have run ratings and pass ratings and interceptions and sacks and et cetera. So this is all just to give you a feel of every single game. And I don't care what the sport is. Every single game is going to have um, is going to have a different way their engine works and a different way their database works. So whenever you build a team for anything, and regardless of sport, you're going to have to consider both of these things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually build the 85 Bears with Pro Strategy Football, and I'm going to go to Editor and Mods. And I'm going to create a new league. And I'm just going to go custom. I'm only going to make one with two teams. I'm just going to call it 1985 Bears Test. Put a capital in there. Uh, it, okay, this is just an example. And let me actually steal. Um, I'm actually going to do their logo so we can actually see it. Okay, close. Um, now, with Pro Strategy Football, you'll want to go to one of the first things you want to knock out. I did league image set, and you're selecting the image set that the league is using. I should have probably explained this to you. I'm using 1985. Okay. And I, and, oops. I'm going to say save as. I'm going to call it 1985 Bears Test. That's the name of our league. So we have it saved. Okay, now, um, 
We'll get to edit leagues and players. You can type in Super Bowl up here. Here, I'll type in Super Bowl 30. Oh, pardon me, 20. And the league year was 1985. This is all just cosmetic. I'll save it. We'll get to edit and teams and players. I want And we did the image set. League rules. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to quick set. And <clears throat> in this game, there are some general rules of football that come built into the game. You can tweak it all the way you want. If I close out, I can sit here and toggle through whatever uh, rules I want. But I want to do what was actually done in 1985. So if I go to quick set, I'm going to go to older pro 1974 to 1993. I will click that. I will say OK and I will save. It is now used in the rules that were used in that time period including 1985. So let's go to conferences. I'm just going to create a two conference, two league uh, setup just to show you as an example. I'm not going to sit there and make 32 teams. Let's add a conf. Well, let's edit this conference. We're going to call it the NFC. And the Bears were in the central. So we'll say central just for the heck of it. I'm going to add a conference. I'm going to say AFC. And we will use the East. Uh, the Bears played the Patriots in the Super Bowl. So we'll just make the Patriots. Okay. Now, I'll go ahead and save that. And I like to save as I go uh, in case I make, uh, in case I have to stop down or something. Go to teams. Now you see the Dallas Cowboys show up. <clears throat> um, it just, it's what the engine brought about here. Uh, I'm going to delete this team. And you click the X. Yes, delete it. I'm going to, I'm not going to copy from another league. I'm going to create. So I'm going to uh, add a new team. It comes up as this by default. It, it's spitting out Dallas first. It just does it by default. I'm going to call it Chicago. And the abbreviation is CHI. This game, I believe, can have four characters for an abbreviation. I'm just going to go CHI for Chicago. The mascot name, Bears. Coach, Mike Ditka. And Chicago. And I know that the image file name for the Chicago franchise in the image folder is Chicago. So when I save it, you see the Bears logo. Now, edit UI colors and images. You click on that. <clears throat> this is set up for Dallas right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the button banner black. I'm going to click that and select black on the bottom right and hit OK. And I'm going to make border colors. I can make them white or I can make them red. Let's make them this upper left hand red. I click on that and I click on it here. The label the, and the border color, which as you can see is where it says UI color gem is for Chicago. It's got a red border and a box. Um, that is uh, that will appear in all your menus uh, when you're looking at the bears. The button banner is think of it as the helmet color, and the label is going to be a strip. Uh, let's save. Let's save it, and then resave. And when you see what I'm going to skip this for now, you can see when I'm in the menu system how it's got a black background with red text that is reminiscent of the 85 bears that's that's just to make make this game feel um, uh, it's it's grammatically more pleasing because you thank the bears and you see their team colors and their menu system forget the players right now they just spit out generic players we will get to that so I'm gonna go to previous and actually let's go next the stadium name. They were in Soldier Field, and it was an open. Uh, it was an open stadium, and they wear their jerseys at home. The color jerseys. Well, Chicago is the windy city, so we're going to make it. Whoops, we'll make it crazy wind, and we'll make it cold temperatures, and we will go moderate precipitation for realism. Next, uh, offensive style. We will keep it balanced. They did favor running. 
they did have they were predominantly halfback oriented and pass usage i just know this that they by one or two catches they threw to the tight end the most so i'm going to go mostly tight end plus two wide outs whoops i will go uh whoops go mostly tight end plus two wide outs i'm not worried about the ratings yet i'm going to get to that later i'm just putting in some of the basics they did favor 4-3. I know they had a 4-6, but a 4-6 is not in the game engine for pro strategy football, so I'm not going to put that in there. Uh, they blitzed. They tend to blitz more. Actually, they were heavy blitzers. And do they favor man-to-man -man or zone? I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to go zone. Uh, and, again, we're not going to do the ratings yet. Okay. Now. Let me add a team, and this is going to be just for comparison purposes. I'm not going to type in all their data. This is just so as a placeholder. New England, NE for short, for the abbreviation. And this is Raymond Barry. And there, I know their file name. You can look it up if you look into the image folder of what you want you will see a file name uh, for each franchise and it normally goes by the city. And I know that they are, whoops, new underscore England. I'm not concerned about the colors right now. I'm just doing this as a placeholder. And look, there's the New England Patriots with their helmet. All right, now go back to Chicago. If I wanted to edit, I can edit in here by clicking on all of this. I'm not going to. There's nothing wrong with you doing it this way. I'm not going to because doing a spreadsheet is a heck of a lot easier. It's a heck of a lot faster. And that's how we're going to get through it. So I'm going to exit out. I did save the league. I'm going to exit out. Yes. Now I'm going to go and you can see all the leagues that we've been working on. I'm currently working on the 2001 season. Just finished 2000 yesterday. 1999 is under construction for those who care. Uh, <laughs> let me go to the, oh, what did I call the league? I've forgotten. Let's see. Uh, uh, now I forgot what I called it. I think it was 1985 Bears sample or something like that. Where was it? 85 Bears test. Here we go. 85 Bears test. The two conferences, two uh, divisions, two teams. I'm going to select that. And now I'm going to say export league to CSV. And it's going to ask me for a name. Okay, here's the name. Save. All right. Now, um, I'm going to open my spreadsheet. I'm going to do this off screen, um, but I'm going to open that CSV file. And uh, just for privacy, I'm doing this um, just in case my name comes up or anything like that uh, or any other pertinent information. So I've got two screens here, but I will show you after I do it where it was uh, called up. Um, uh, just bear with me for a moment. Okay. Um, I'm getting there. Okay. Okay, it's coming. All right. All right. Okay. Now, where did I get this? I went to, and of course, I just ruined the whole privacy thing. All right. Um, I highlighted, I went into my documents, the Pro Strategy Football 2021 folder, import, export, 1985 Bears test CSV. I opened that. Okay. Now, you're going to see a bunch of gobbledygook. Um, and this is a two-team setup. You're going to scroll down, and I'm just going to edit Chicago. Now, normally when you got a 32-team league or whatever size you may have, um, it is going to have a whole bunch of teams. 
But right now, all we're concerned about is the Bears. Now, there are team ratings, which is what these are here. Uh, I'm only concerned about Chicago. Now, here's a trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to until where it says team division abbreviation is the top row. Go to view on your software and I'm going to go to freeze panels. I'm going to say freeze top row because that is the top row. Okay. Now when I scroll up and down you see it's frozen. It hasn't changed any data it's just frozen that top row. Okay. So um, now you can stretch things out like I did here in this cell abbreviation okay um, Chicago okay so let's take a look the Chicago abbreviation the name of the t city of Chicago the name of the franchise is the Bears they play at Soldier Field now these numbers under wind temp precipitation jerseys they are what we put in f before. There is a set of numbers to denote uh, these things. And we already said it's windy, it's cold, um, has moderate precipitation, and they like to wear their home jerseys. Now, if you were to do this without doing it in the game editor first, I'm going to unfreeze this so you can scroll up. It does have it here um, under, it's up here somewhere. Here it is, um, team attributes. It's actually including the text file if you forget to do it or you made a mistake. Okay, um, so I'm just stretching these fields out. So. Wind, zero equals is dome or no wind. One is normal wind, two is blustery. Temperature, zero is cold, one is moderate, two is hot. Precipitation, zero is dry, uh, one is normal, two is wet. Jerseys, zero, they use their color jerseys at home, one is their white. Uh, hello, Al. Uh, hi, Mike, uh, Michael Meredith. Hello, Red Wolf. Yeah, I know who you are. Uh, Al, there's nothing wrong with making the teams in the editor in the game. But when I go through this, I'm hoping that it takes some getting used to. But what I'm hoping is this will expedite creating teams. It does for me by a long shot because I can also copy and paste entire fields. Um, so let's see. Let me go back here. All right. All right, I'm just going to shrink these down so we can read a little more. Okay. Now I'm going to freeze this top panel again. Again, it's under the View tab. Freeze panels, freeze top row. So when I scroll up and down, this wind, temp, precipitation, blah, 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 stays put. Now, we're going to go into the various... Miscellaneous, miscellaneous ratings that every team has. Um, we're going to go through all of that. There's discipline coaching, red zone, defensive stop, uh, big plays, defensive stamina, what form of defense do they use, man, bliss, et etc. Et we're going to go through all that. First of all, I'm going to actually, I'm going to call it up first on my other screen. Bears. Give me a moment. Okay. Whoops. All right. Here's the 1985 Bears from ProFootballReference.com. I highly recommend Pro Football Reference. All right. So, this is the 1985 Bears, and here's how we're going to start putting in their miscellaneous information. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat this a little bit. And this is what I do when I make these teams. Okay, I'm going to shrink this like this. And I'm going to stretch this out like this. Scroll this down. Because once you're set, then you can just start cranking out stuff. Discipline. 
This applies on a scale of 0 to 9. 0 being the worst, 9 being the best. So let's scroll down. Discipline is basically penalties. So you will look at, as I scroll down, again, this is the 85 bears. Whoops, 85 bears, you can see. Uh, I'm going to go to penalties. And you see here they had 104 in a 16-week season. This is all opinion. On a scale of 0 to 9, how are they with 104 penalties? Okay, I'll say a 7. Okay? That's opinion. I'm just going to have to judge every single team by... Uh, with, with when it comes to pro strategy football, they're not actually looking for a statistic. They are looking for a rating. Okay, well, I'm going to give them a 7 on an all-time scale of 0 to 9 for 104 penalties in a 16-week season. Again, it's opinion. You may think it's an 8. You may think it's a 6. And that's all up to you. So you make it the way you want to make it. Sorry, Al, we have to talk about the 85 Bears because I figured at least that's a team that everybody has at least heard of. Um, let's see. Uh, Michael Meredith, it seems I always encounter CSV issues in the end when using Excel. Not sure why. Always resort to Notepad for vinyl conversion save. Well, uh, if you could explain to me what your holdup is, maybe I can assist you with that, Michael. Um, it might also be how you're saving it because you don't just save it as an Excel file. It could be that you, you're not saving it as a CSV file. And to show you, I'm going to go into Excel. I'm going to go Save As. I'm not actually going to save it. But you see where it says Save Type? The default is this, Excel Workbook. You don't save it that way. Etched in stone for this game, you have to save it. You scroll down to where it see it says CSV, but you want to say, want the one that says CSV comma delimited. You have to save it in this format, etched in stone, no two ways around it. So try that. I'm willing to bet you that's what it is. If it's a saving issue, okay? Because you can see, look look at all this stuff. Look look at all this stuff that that, that I have. Uh, and these aren't all the CSVs, okay? Like this 1963 NFL. That's how I built the 1963 NFL, literally, on this little spreadsheet, and then I imported it in. And then if I had to fix anything, I went back to the spreadsheet, tweaked it, re-imported it, tested it, lather, rinse, repeat, which is something that's very common with making all this stuff. So it's not just one you're done necessarily. It can take a lot of work just to make one team. Ask Al. <laughs> okay, so we did discipline. Coaching, what they want in coaching, I'm just going to unlock this, is how the coach, Mike Ditka, coached this team. Was he aggressive? Was he conservative? Was he balanced? What was he? So as a default, if I don't know, I just go balanced. And that's what most people do. You know, somebody like uh, uh, the 99 Rams are probably going to be gambler. It's what they call it, not aggressive. They call it gambler. They're a gambling offense. As an example, the Chiefs this year might be considered a gambling offense. It's your opinion. Um, so, uh, but we will look. Here's coaching. If you, we already did this inside the game engine. But if you made a mistake or you forgot or you're doing this straight off the CSV, coaching style zero is conservative, one is balanced, two is gambler. Okay. We went with one when we clicked on balance and it comes up as a one. We'll just say Dick is a balanced head coach. Red zone. This is on a rating of zero to nine. How they were. Okay, well, there are no real statistics readily available for red zone. Same for, and this is a rating. Um, red zone, defense stopping big plays you'll see next, and defensive stamina. There, there isn't really a statistic, and these are all ratings. So here's what I do as a rubber stamp way if you are not familiar with the team, here's what you can do. I'm going to go up to the 85 Bears, and I'm going to go for, look, see where it says points for and points against? Points for, that's how great their offense was. Okay? I'm not looking at the numbers. I'm just looking at the rating. They were second in the league out of 28 teams. 
They were second in the league on their offense. Points against, that's how good their defense was. They were number one in the league on their defense. Now, you can actually to also take into consideration, they only allowed 198 points in the 16-week 16, 16 regular season, and that's pretty amazing. And they allowed 400, they, they scored 456 on their offense. So, you can look at both, and you're going to have to make an educated guess. But if, if a team is number one in either category, normally I go nines. Because, and then if they were number two, then come the eights. And I normally go two through five. This is just my method of when I create teams. You can have your own method, and there are going to be a trillion different opinions on how to do it. And you can do this till you're blue in the face. Uh, because believe me, I have done it until I've been blue in the face. And I've just learned the best thing to do is to make it simple, short, stupid. Okay? You're using something that's accurate. You're using something that is of a decent opinion. You're not going to make everybody happy. But you do it anyway because you got to draw the line somewhere. Um, you do the same thing and use points for and against. Yes, but I also I do that as well as the overall rating in the league. So if you're unfamiliar, you rubber stamp it. And who's going to argue with you when there are no stats? And I'm not like trying to be a jerk or play off. Well, you know that's not going to be accurate or anything. Like that. It's true when you get right down to it because you have nothing to go off of. There's no. Ratings are opinion as well. If they're not using an actual number, ratings are opinion. And we can argue that forever. Ratings are opinion. I don't care if it's a professional working for a professional company that has a license to anything. Ratings are somebody's opinion. It's somebody else's opinion than yours. You may agree, you may disagree. And I don't care at what level they are at. What league they may work for, what kind of analyst they are, it is opinion. And a lot of times analysts are wrong. And we all know that. So um, you're making this for you if you're making it. Now, when we make them, we offer them up to the, our best opinion. If you don't like something that's uh, a rating or something like that or you think something needs to be tweaked, hey, after we, get, after we put them up to be offered and they're for free, they're your league at that point once you've got it in your hands. You can do it with whatever you want. You can modify, well, why would we have any say in it at that point? Unless you're redistributing it under our name, which this is not the point. You make it for you. You edit it for you. You're supposed to be the one having fun. We're just giving you a template to the best of our ability is about as accurate as you can get. Uh, in, in our opinion, and again, it's our opinion. You may have a different opinion. You make it for you. We're just offering it to you to have fun. This is what this is all about. You can sit here and argue this game's better than this for results, accuracy, opinion, blah, 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 blah. There are 20 billion different games out there. There are going to be 20 different billion different results when you sim each individual game. So have fun. That's what this is. If you don't like something that is in any of these rosters, once, you, once they're on your computer or your iPad, you can make the alteration and you make it the way you thought it should, you think it should be it's we don't take anything personal we're offering something to everybody for free to have fun to enhance to, to enhance a game i mean that's the way i look at it make it make it your game as far as i'm concerned that's what's great about this game and any of these games that have editors they allowed allow you to make it your game so make it your game make it your team make it your your season your career However you want to do it, make it yours. If there's something you don't like, by all means, edit it. Just keep it to yourself. Now, you can, if you, you want to offer it up and say it was based off of, of something from our mod site and, you know, you have a personal take that this is a better enhancement, as long as you're stating where it came from originally and give us credit, okay, that's perfectly fine. It's all about having fun, everybody. So, um Anyway, uh, red zone rating. So, as we said, they had the number one defense, and they allowed pretty few points, nine. I don't think anybody's going to argue with me making their red zone rating on defense a nine. Stop big plays, same thing, nine. Defensive stamina, stamina, I, I try to keep that in league with 
their overall rating. Nine. Now, three four. Three four in the game is a default. The Bears used a four three. Technically a four six, but it's not in the game, so we say four three. And we already did that in the game engine before we exported it out. But if you think you made an error, you forgot or whatever, if you scroll up again, it will tell you three four. Zero is preferred, one is seldom. Basically that's no. Um and oops, did I just lose connection? Oh, hang on a second. Oh no, I'm still here. Okay. Um, so let me move this back. Sorry. And now I'm somebody sending me a text. Um, balance means sometimes they use three four, sometimes they use four three. They mix up their defensive setup. So we said one. Seldom is really basically never. I think the get this is again the way the AI does it. You can play the game however you want. But we will say one seldom, which is basically they used a 4-3. And that is actually um, what was in there anyway, because we already built it. How often they used man-to-man, -man, how often they blitzed. Um, again, those are settings that we did. Those were numbers, and those are settings that are up here. If you forget, man-to-man, -man, blitz. Uh, man to man preferred zero seldom is one balance is two uh, blitz zero is seldom one sum two average three stretch us out more for heavy blitzer we'll say the bears were heavy blitzing okay the next number we scroll over here is force fumbles now here comes a mathematical thing um, if you go down to and a lot of times they don't exist, especially with older teams. How often did their defense cause fumbles? They may not exist. Um, so if you scroll down, and I'm going to go to, there should be a section on fumbles, defense and fumbles, okay? And I'm not going to do the math. I'm just going to explain this to you. Um, if you scroll to the bottom, see where it says, defense fumbles I'm not going by the players right now I'm just going by the team because again these are team numbers scroll the bottom team total they had in a 16 week season that's oh, that's their average age so you come up to fumbles and th then there's also fumble returns so a, a team might fumble the ball away but they might pick it up or the defense picks it up so, number of fumbles. Um, the, where it says team, this is what the Bears did. So, it looks like 27. Now, the opponents only picked up 10 fumbles, but there's no rating in here for that. Uh, but this is just letting you know that when the offense of the Bears fumbled the ball, in case the game is asking for you that, for that that's what the opponent to total is. That means how many times the Bears turned it over um, so you'll go off of that and then you'll have to take that number and here's the fun part so we'll go with um, I'm not going to do the math but we'll say 27 this is what the defensive for the Bears did 27 okay all right well ha remember the number 27 now Opponent uh, opponent stats. How many plays did the opponents have? Well, they had, if you look under, and it's highlighted in yellow, passing attempts, they had 522 passing attempts. How many times did they run the ball? 359. So what you could do is add 522 plus 359. I'm just going to make just make up a number. Let's say it's um, 900. We'll just call it, we'll just say 950. Then you're going to divide that 27 to 950, and you're going to get a percent, or the other way around, excuse me, and you're going to get a percentage. So now you're going to take that percentage, if it was a number cruncher, and you could put it in, and that would be an accurate depiction. Uh, but this isn't a number cruncher. So you're going on a scale of 0 to 9. Um, so force fumbles, Michael Meredith, is a rating, and this is a team rating in general. So, again, it's opinion, but 
you could go through the math and then you're going to have to sit there whatever that percentage is the, again the game's not asking for a percentage the game is asking for rating on zero to nine that's the way pro strategy football is built so you're going to have to use your opinion and you're going to have to use your opinion based on all these other teams so uh i'm just going to say there are nine that they force an insane amount of fumbles i mean if if you just want to do it quick you could go off of, and this is just opinion, just like you did the ratings for red zone and, and stopping big plays and stuff like that. They were first in the league and they only allowed 198 points. You could just rubber stamp that the same as the others if you have no way of calculating it. Because what do you, what do you have to go off of? You're, I mean, this is a rating based off of a number that you've got to compare at least with the other teams in the regular season of the respective season but if you're also building this for all time you got to thank all time and that is just you know mind-blowing astronomical insanity so we're going to put that in for nine right now all right offensive focus and again all of these numbers are ratings folks if they're not a setting for the team they're a rating there are no statistics for this these are ratings for this game offensive focus what they're asking, this is a setting, an offensive focus, and here it is, offensive focus. Zero is heavy runs, one is slight, two is balanced offense, three is pass, and four, slight pass, and four is heavy passing. So this is a kind of a judgment, not necessarily an opinion, but a judgment judged by how often they ran the ball as a team and passed the ball as a team. And here's what I do. Here's what I do. If you go back down to team stats and ratings, team stats, I look at rushing attempts, 610. Passing attempts, 432. Okay, well, you know that they ran more than they passed. Now is a judgment call. Are they heavy runs up here, zero, slight runs, one? They're not going to be balanced because they obviously threw, uh, ran more than they threw. In my experience, I will say it's a slight runs. You could go heavy, but I'm going to go slight runs. I tend to keep heavy runs for teams from the 50s or 60s that absolutely heavy ran, or somebody like the 72 Dolphins. They are heavy run because Greasy went through a dozen passes, tops on average. Um, so I will do that as a heavy run, uh, a team like that. So for the Bears, I'm going to say a slight run, and I'm going to have that as a one. I think it already is. Okay, uh, yes. Ball security, and that is correct. That's a setting. Ball security is a rating. Uh, sports time machine would be super conservative uh, in reference to what? Their offense, about their play calling. I put balanced. And again, uh, sports time machine, not incorrect. It's his take on it, and he could very well be right. And let me actually look how... NFL Pro League Football listed it. They listed the starting offense of the Bears as conservative and their defense as aggressive. So um, what you could do is, yes, you could make the coaching zero conservative. You can. That's, that's right, uh, Sports Time Machine. So that's what you could do in reference to that. Um. And again, it's opinion. I think you're probably right, to be honest, in fairness. But if you're unsure, is what I was saying before, you go balanced. Because that's not too conservative or too much gambling. And so that would be a little more historically accurate. So Sports Time Machine does have a, a valid point. Um, ball security. Uh, fumbles is what this is. And this is as a team, not as an individual player this is a team rating of zero to nine and again it's opinion um so as a team what you could do is you go back to fumbles uh scroll down and i'm gonna get to oops did i pass it yes defensive fumbles um yeah well this is for offense so you're gonna have to look uh at if they have a fumble uh, number for a player, and they do here under 
rushing and receiving. I thought for a minute I couldn't remember if they had it under a quarterback. Rushing and receiving. So Peyton had six. Suey had two. McMahon had four. Uh, Sanders had one. Fuller had three. Tom Zach had one. And so on and so on and so on. So you could add those numbers up and divide it by the number of running and passing plays to try to give you a feel of what to rate it. Again, that's by team. So uh, if you are in the mindset of, I just need something generic, what you could do is, again, go to um, their points for second best offense in the league. And again, this is, they may have the second best offense in the league, but they might have had fumbleitis. So you can't necessarily go off of this. Uh, but I'm just saying as a rubber stamp, you could put that number in if you're unable to do the math on it. Or you could just like browse through and go, wow, this team had a lot of fumbles. I mean, you know, I'm going to put it in as a five. Um, but as a general rule, what I do is if a team is number one on offense or defense, they get a nine. It's a general mentality, and then you could fine tune up or down in various aspects. Uh, and then numbers two through five are an eight. Well, Chicago had the second best offense, so you could say ball security as an eight. But again, to be the completely accurate, you want to go. You want to go to um, their rushing and receiving, and all the individuals that actually rushed and received, and look at the number of fumbles. And here's another thing: number of fumbles does not mean fumbles lost. It's how many times they fumbled the ball. So if you see Walter Payton, it says he had six fumbles. He might have, or somebody else in the team might have picked up all six. So it was a zero fumbles lost it depends on what the engines ask for some engines will ask for fumbles and fumbles lost some are just asking for fumbles and randomly determines who gets the ball so again you have to know the engine uh, red zone same thing on the offense if you're unfamiliar with how well if you're unfamiliar how great they were on the end zone you can go off of uh, their points for second out of 28 and again I stated what I would do is unless they're number one they'd be a nine two through five is eight you could say they were at eight how well they are on the two minute warning again it's a rating zero to nine so you're gonna have to sit there and do the math I'm just gonna say a rating of eight as a blanket one uh, if you're unfamiliar, it's something to go off of. Is it completely right? Probably not. But if you don't have a basis by which to go off of, then you've got to put in something. Uh, Dick had let McMahon make mistake. Didn't let McMahon make mistakes. Uh, Michael, have a good one. Um, again, it's all opinion, and you're you will never get it right. I'll never get it right. Nobody will ever get it right. You're just trying to make this game feel like you're playing the 85 Bears or you're playing against them. All right, here's what I do for home rating and road rating, and I hope this logic makes sense. Home rating is a scale of 0 to 9, and so is road. Actually, it's 1 to 9, pardon me. 1 to 9, so is road. Here's what I do. The Bears went 15 and 1, and this is going to be simple. What I do is you can see here their results, and we, it's very simple. We know that they lost one game that year, and they lost a road game. Okay? There are eight in a 16-week season, which they played. There are eight home games, eight road games. Home rating. Well, they went for eight for eight. What's the highest possible rating you can give them? It's a nine. Okay? Logical sense. Um, that's the mentality I use for making a home rating. Uh, and the same for road. So with that, um, road rating, and I'm going to go by percentage I'm about to show you. We know that they only lost one game all year and it was on the road. I'm actually going to call up calculator. Okay. They won seven of eight games. So I'm going to divide on the road. I'm going to divide seven by eight, and it gives me a percentage, 87 and a half. Okay. I round it up, okay, to an 88. All right. Um, my mentality is this. Nine is the highest. So what I do is if they won 90 to 100% of their games, they get a nine. If they won 80 to 89% of their games, they get an eight. 70 to 75%, seven, so on and so on and so on. So for this... Um, 
The home range is going to be a 9. The road range is going to be an 8. They lost a game. So they're in the 80 percentile. It may be, you know, almost 89, but they're still in the 80 percentile. Uh, that's just the way I do it. Uh, you can have your own method. It's all up to you. And finally, here are two things that I think are kind of cool when setting up a team. Run usage and pass usage. We already did it in the engine, but I'm going to explain it. Run use, I, I just know because I've built this team. Run usage in the pass. Run usage and pass usage. I'm going to show you how to determine it using Pro Football Reference. Okay? Um, we will go down to uh, run usage and pass usage. Zero is halfback oriented. One is fullback oriented. Two is halfback and fullback, meaning that they each get a share of the ball roughly 50% of the time. They basically had close to, if not, the same amount of touches, uh, so they're used equally. Um, three is halfback, fullback with subs. What this is is the fullback is the starter, and the two halfbacks are constantly subbing 50-50 back and forth. Teams that did that as an example, 72 Dolphins, uh, 58 Colts. They were fullback oriented, but they used, they went evenly between their fullback and halfback, but they took their two halfbacks and they rotated them basically evenly. So that way you can have uh, Zonka as the fullback for the 72 Dolphins and Morris and Kick are going to combine have about as many rushes as Zonka does by himself, but they're sp split roughly 50-50. That and Some teams did that kind of thing, and so that's what that option is for. And finally, number four is halfback and quarterback. What that is is a quarterback scrambler. So if you've got somebody like Steve Young or Patrick Mahomes uh, from this year, um, uh, Fran Tarkenton, um, uh, any quarterback who scrambled a lot, uh, Randall Cunningham, you could make this uh, run usage as a four. Pass usage, two wide receivers and tight end, that's a default. That means that they're throwing the two wide receivers, they're starting two wide receivers the most, and their third target is normally the tight end. That's a default. Uh, secondly is, excuse me, let me state that again, I mis misspoke. Two wide receiver, zero, let me highlight it. You're throwing to your two wide outs first, then it goes to the tight end and all the various running backs. That's a default. My apologies, I misspoke. Two wide receiver and tight end. In actuality, the tight end is the primary receiver. So if you have somebody like the Giants back in the Phil Simms days with Mark Bavaro, he got the most catches. Uh, someone with the Kansas City Chiefs right now with Kelsey, he has the most catches. So Mahomes is going to throw to Kelsey the most. Um, uh, the Raiders, with when Todd Christensen was their tight end, they threw to him the most. So the Raiders from the 80s have an orientation of throwing to him the most. That's what it means, is that, that Plunkett will target Christensen more than he will Branch or Bolitnikoff or, or, or whoever it w w were his receivers. Um, number two is three wideouts. This is for a team that, yeah, they've got a tight end, but they normally go three wideouts. And to give you an example, Washington from the back half of the 80s, they had uh, Ricky Sanders, Gary Clark, and Art Monk. They threw to them more than their – I mean, they only threw to their tight end maybe 10 or 12 times a whole year. So uh, that's a three-wide receiver-oriented oriented, uh, team. You could use that with the existing engine build for somebody like Warren Moon's uh, run-and-shoot Oilers. Uh, but you'd have to cheat and put in a wide receiver in the tight end slot uh, because there are built-in tight ends. Even though the team didn't have a tight end in reality, once they went run and shoot, they were all wide outs. Well, the, the game of pro strategy football has a limitation into their roster, so you have to, uh, and we'll get into that. Uh, next is two wide receiver setup and halfback. That means that they threw the halfback a lot. They still had a two wide receiver base, but they ended up dumping off the halfback a lot. And four is a three wide out. They weren't really throwing to the tight end, but they also dumped off to the halfback a lot. And an example of that would be like the greatest show on turf, the 99 Rams. They had wide receivers all over the place, but they ended up throwing to Marshall Falk a lot. So you would have that team set with this setting. So now, if you don't know the team, how do you determine their run usage and pass usages? usage and this is what I do look at 
there, and I'm going to blow, make this a little bit bigger. Look at their rushing and receiving. Um, they normally go with this engine rushing, with this website rushing, and then it eventually breaks down into passing. Uh, the running backs, and then eventually they go to their receivers. All right. You've got Walter Payton as a halfback, and he had 324 rushes. Next running back that had the most rushes was Matt Suey, a fullback, 115. All right, well, you see that they ran with Walter Payton a lot. So now did Jim McMahon scramble a lot? Let's look. Um, he scrambled 47 times. Now, he is the third most used running back, but that number is so low, we're not going to say that this is a scrambling team. With the big number of Peyton, you know, three times the amount, almost three times the amount as Matt Sui, this team is a halfback-oriented team. Again, that default number is uh, zero. So, whoops. So, when we put it in, uh, in the engine, uh, when we were building the template, initial template for the team, that was correct. Pass usage. All right, well, who has the most receptions? You keep an eye on their running backs to see if they dumped off a lot. And they did dump off a lot to Walter Payton. But I do know this engine does dump off to the halfback a lot by default. He doesn't have like 90 catches. Like somebody like Marshall Falk might have with the 99 Rams or 80 catches. He's got a, you know, he's thrown to a lot, yes. And more than the receivers apparently, but he still has a typical number. So I look at Okay, well, here are the receivers down here. Who did he throw to? Who did the Bears throw to the most? Well, the player with the most receptions, barely, is Emery Moorhead, the tight end. He had 35 catches. Well, the next person is Willie Gall, is 33. Now, you could nitpick about whether to make this a tight end-oriented team, or you also look at Willie Gall had 33 catches and McKinnon had 31. Two wideouts, you know, had a lot. And it was just by hair that Moorhead had more catches. So that in mind, what what I did was I said it was tight end oriented. Now, if you wanted to go wide receiver oriented, you know, something because it's that close, it's not wrong. Um, it's again, it's opinion. So when it's that close, but I went tight end oriented, which was number one uh, in the setting. A head coach. Mike Ditka, we already did it. Now I'm going to get into the 85 Bears roster. And I'm going to shrink this down to make it more viewable. Now these are fictional names, and the fictional names do come. Um, and fictional jersey number, all that's fictional. Okay? We're going to get rid of all that. And before we do, I want you to see... Um, just a moment. Before I do that, I want you to see. Um, here we go. The number of slots that exist, and this is etched stone for this game. Two quarterbacks, two halfbacks, two fullbacks, three tight ends. Even if your team doesn't have any tight ends, like a run shoot, you've got three tight ends. You have three slots built into the game. Two split ends. That's a wide receiver opposite the tight end. That's just an old school name. Tight end's very tight on the line. Split end is on the opposite side far away. But it's a wide receiver. It's just an old school name for a wide receiver. Wide receiver one, two, and three. They also are sometimes referred to in this game as a flanker. A flanker is a receiver on the opposite side of the split end. You've got the tight end, which is an end that's tight to the line normally. Normally, they, they're for blocking and or receiving. Then you have the split end, which is on the opposite end of the tight end. That's a receiver. And the flanker is on the opposite side of that split end. That's a receiver. Why receiver flanker in this game are the same. It's just the way it's named right now. So in reality, you have a total of one, two, three, four, five wideouts. Offensive left tackle, offensive left guard, the center, the offensive right guard, the offensive right tackle, five offensive linemen. 
And offensive line five, that's your backup. You have one backup in this engine. You can only have one backup in this engine until a 53-man roster is made. Defensive left end. Now, defensive left tackle or nose guard. This is dependent on whether you're going a 3-4 or 4-3. I'm going to scroll all the way down for the defensive ends to show you. You've got a defensive left end. You've got a defensive left tackle or the nose tackle or nose guard. It's the same position. Nose tackle, nose guard, it's the same position. Sometimes phrased differently, but it's the same position. Then you have the defensive right tackle and the defensive end on the right, the defensive right end, and defensive line four. That's your backup in case anybody gets hurt. You have one backup. That's the way this engine is built. Okay? Now, if you are denoting a 3-4, then you are going to use the defensive left end, the defensive left tackle or nose tackle using the nose guard or nose tackle. You're not using the defensive right tackle on a 3-4. He's not one of the three men on the line. You're using the defensive right end. So defensive left end, defensive left tackle or nose tackle, skip to defensive right end. Those are your three men on the line if you're using a 3-4. 3-4 means you have three men on the line, and you're going to have four linebackers. Another common defense is a 4-3, which has four men on the line and three linebackers. 3-4, three, 4-3. Four, four, three. Well, what's really the difference? 3-4 tends to be better with passing if you know they're going to pass because that means you've got an extra person in the backfield. A 4-3 is better if you know that a team's going to run uh, because... You've got an extra man in the box, meaning on the line. Inside the box where the linebackers and linemen are, you've got an extra person on the line. It's a defensive scheme is what it is. So in this case, if it was a 4-3, you are using the defensive end, and the nose guard, NG, or nose tackle, is going to be the left tackle, right tackle, defensive right end. Now, when you're putting in these players... You're going to see if a team is a 3-4 or a 4-3. And a way to tell is a lot of times in this database, if you scroll and you hit more team info, scroll down, here's defensive alignment. Whoops. Defensive alignment. The Bears typically used a 4-3. We already put that in their defensive setup in the team settings. We've already entered it in. Now, if you were to play the game and you were to go to 3-4, the engine's only going to select the defensive end, the nose guard, and the right end. This player, again, I haven't removed the names yet. This guy, Eddie Fowler, is not going to be in it. He's not going to be on that line in on that play. All right, now you've got the linebackers. The right outside line, pardon me, the left outside linebacker, and if it's a three linebacker setup, he's the left linebacker. The right outside linebacker, Again, if it's a three setup, he's the right linebacker. The left inside linebacker or middle linebacker. If it's a three setup, this is your middle linebacker. If it's a four setup, it's your left inside linebacker. And finally, the right inside linebacker. So if you're using a three, four, and you're using one, two, three, four linebackers, all four of these players will be on the be your linebackers. You'll have this person on the left outside, this person on the right, this person on the left inside, and this person on the right inside. If you're using a 4-3 defense, then this left outside linebacker is your left linebacker. The right outside linebacker is your right linebacker. This player becomes the middle linebacker. This is your third linebacker, person in the middle. There will be no right inside linebacker. This player, this John Matthews, who's fictional right now, is not in the game, at least on that play, because you went with a 4-3. Linebacker 4, I think, should be called linebacker 5, but this is your spare linebacker in case you have a linebacker hurt. You only have one spare in this game. That's it, and it's etched in stone. Now, you get to the left cornerback, is a defensive back on the left corner, typically by a wide out. Free safety, the free safety kind of roams around and is farther in the back, typically. 
Strong safety is a safety like the free safety, but he's typically a little bit closer um, to the line. Uh, but they could drop both of these safeties back all the way. Uh, but the free safety mean they're more free to roam just by themselves in the backfield. Uh, where the strong safety tends to be a little bit closer and more concentrated on what's going on in the, on the play after the snap a little more necessarily than the free safety. Right cornerback. They are a defensive back on the right corner, and they're up against a receiver. So you've got this is your secondary. Typically, it's four players. You've got your two corners and your two safeties. Now, if you go into a nickel formation, you need another defensive back. That's the nickel player. If you go into a dime formation, same thing. That means you're adding a second player, another player. So you actually have, if you're in a dime formation, you have one, two, three, four, five, six defensive backs. If you are in a nickel, you've got five. If you're in a standard formation, you have your typical four. DB6, backup defensive back. Again, anybody gets hurt, DB6 will come in. And in this case, it's this person named Mika Ferguson. They come in for a substitute. Etch and stone, that's the way this game is set up. There's no two ways around. Hello, Alan. How you doing, bud? All right. Kicker, your field goal kicker. You get one kicker. Never can get hurt in this game. One kicker. You get two kick returners. Even if you only had one that actually played in real life, you get two. So if you have a team that only had one person returning, then kick returner two is going to have to be fictional. You don't have a choice the way this game is set up. Your punter, you have one. can never get hurt. You have one punter. Now, just like the kick returner, you have two punt returners. Even if you had more in real life on this team, you only can enter in two. If you only have one player putting in punts, punt returner two has to be fictional. So, all right. Now, <clears throat> here's what I do for entering an in information. I'm going to highlight the name of the first player, quarterback one. And I'm looking at all the way to Jersey. All right. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to hold my shift key and I'm going to click that last Jersey. I'm literally going to hit delete. Bam. So there's no confusion. Those get players are gone. Year, year is something that Kerry had put in, and I asked about. You used to put in the number of years the players played. It never showed up in the game. It was never used in a simulation. It was something that he was build, considering for the future, and he never used it. Just leave it alone. Now, he may end up using this for something else, this field, and call it something else. If he's able to, for example, this is a possibility. If he's able to do skin tone, for players, this year field might be called skin tone, and it might be a value where, say, zero is a darker skin tone for the individual player, and one is a lighter skin tone. Don't know how Kerry is going to set it up, but this is a possibility. So with the new graphics come new possibilities, and denoting a player's skin tone is something that is being considered because now he can do it, and this is something that's been asked of, of Mr. Bats. Now he can do it because of the new graphics. So right now, they're, they mean nothing for version 2021 and before. And I had entered them before and found out there was no, there was no need for it. So bypass it. OK, now let's go to age. We're going to delete age, draft round, and draft order. We're not doing any ratings. We're going to delete age, draft round, draft order. So I highlighted the first one by quarterback one, put my mouse over draft overall. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to highlight all those fields, and I'm going to go delete, gone. Now, here comes the fun part, folks. We're going to enter in player names. Now, how do we do it? Okay, I'm going to go to the 85 Bears. I'm going to go to quarterbacks. There's Jim McMahon. Okay, first name Jim McMahon. And when you do this, sometimes you'll see a punter or a receiver, or a running back that threw passes more than the backup. So don't put them in because you have the ability of having uh, the ball being thrown on a fake punt or by a halfback option pass. Uh, literally 
put in the quarterback. And the way you can tell if you have a question is you can either look, as I've highlighted, Steve Fuller, quarterback. If you are unsure, what I like to do is right-click the person's name and open a new window. And there's Steve Fuller, and he is a quarterback. Okay. So for quarterback two, Steve Fuller. Halfback one. It's Walter Payton. Next player, Matt Suey, is a fullback. So I'm actually going to go to fullback. Matt Suey. Okay. Jim McMahon is listed next. He's a quarterback. We'll skip him now. Calvin Thomas. Right click and hit open a new window. And sometimes it will tell you if he's a halfback or a fullback. Doesn't tell me. I'm going to make him a halfback. Okay. Halfback two. Calvin Thomas. Now, sometimes you can find out because the next running back you put in, you find out as a halfback or fullback, and then you can swap them. That's up to you. Now, here's where I cheat. The next running back is supposed to be Dennis Gentry. He was a wide receiver and a running back. So I could put him in as a wide out. That's not wrong. Okay, I've, let's see. There's Tom, Thomas Sanders. Is this a, a right-click? Whoops, I'm going to right-click on his name. He was a running back. I'm going to cheat and not put him in. Here's why. If you know the history of uh, teams, you can cheat and do these little things. I'm going to make fullback number two, William the Refrigerator Perry. Because who doesn't want to try to hammer the ball home with the refrigerator when playing one of these games? Sure you do. So I'm going to cheat. Now, I'm not going to not have Thomas Sanders in the game. I'm going to put him in as a wide out or something or a tight end. But I'm literally going to make... William Perry, fullback two. Okay, tight ends. Tight ends and wide receivers. I'm going to scroll through. Get rid of this. Now, we already, if you remember, we already know uh, the most reception was by Emery Moorhead, and he was a tight end. We already know that. And it even says, you can see, by his name. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to go through finding specifically tight ends just yet. Now I'm just going to look and see which receivers had the most receptions. Okay, next is Willie Galt. He had 33. So I'm going to go to, and now when it comes to split in and wide receiver, the game can go by how high a player is rated uh, when trying to pick out who to throw to. But I've also learned from the programmer that by default, the game tries to go to wide receiver one first as a primary receiver. Split in one would be second. Wide receiver two, third. Split in two, fourth. If the quarterback's trying to throw to the wide out. If you tell the quarterback to throw the tight end, then he's going to try the tight end first. But if a quarterback, even if you've got somebody listed as a primary receiver, the game engine is going to look at, unless you tell it to look at the tight end first, it's going to go wide receiver one first, split in one second, Y receiver two third, split into fourth. Okay, so keep that in mind. Y receiver one because it was the most catches is Willie Galt. Next is Dennis McKinnon, so we'll make that player split in one. Okay. Now we did Emory Warhead 33, 31, 24. Tim Reitman. Now was he wide out because it doesn't always say or tight end. Tim Reitman was a tight end. So we know where to put him. Tim Reitman. All right. Okay. Now we have a couple players with ones down here. Let's see. Who was Brad Anderson? Was a wideout. Okay. So you can go Brad Anderson. Now who was... James Maness, he's next at one. He was a wide receiver. Okay, so I will go for wide receiver two, James Maness. All right, now, now it looks like I've run out of wide receivers. So what do I do? Well, are there any running backs that caught passes that we don't list as halfback one or two, fullback one or two? Yes, there are. We did Peyton and Suey. 
we did Thomas, and then we cheated and we had Perry. Okay, so who's next? It would be Dennis Gentry. And, but it was also considered a wideout. Now, since we know that, look at the number of catches Gentry had. Five. Well, Gentry had more than these guys that had one. So what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and get rid of James Maness and Brad Anderson. I'm going to remember them. I'm going to take Gentry, because he was considered a wideout, and put him as wide receiver two, because he had the third most receptions. So we will go Dennis Gentry. Okay. Now we can go back. We had Brad Anderson and James Maness. Okay, split into, again, that's fourth, Brad Anderson. Wide receiver three was James Maness. All right. All right, well, we've already done all the tight ends that actually caught passes. There's a way to look at the entire roster of 45 players, which is what they had back then. And if you're not able to put it on anybody, you can see if they actually had a tight end just listed in the roster who didn't play. Then you could type in that person's name, and you're going to have to make up a rating for him. But this person would be listed as his listing would be historically accurate. There's no right or wrong way about this. Uh, so you just have to kind of feel out your whole situation. All right. Well, since we don't have a tight end three, remember Thomas Sanders was the running back that we bypassed. There he is. Thomas Sanders was the running back we bypassed for William the Refrigerator Perry. Okay, well, hey, we got a spot, and he's in the he's included in the game. Thomas Sanders. All right, I've done my offensive starters. I'm going to hit save. Okay, actually, I'm going to hit yeah, I'm going to hit save, and it's going to ask me because this was saved as a CSV from the game. It may contain features that are not compatible, etc., etc., etc. Do you want to do it? You say yes. Okay. Now, because we're on the stats page, I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to go to special teams. <coughs> Excuse me. So let me scroll to special teams, kicking and punting. Okay. All right. The kicker, his name is Kevin Butler. I'll go to the punter. His name is Maury Buford, as you can see here, kicker and punter. Because the punter has his stats over here on the far right, and the kicker has his stats on the far left. Okay, we're just entering in their names for right now. All right, uh, kick returners and punt returners. If you scroll above kicking and punting, you'll see kick returners and punt returners. Don't go by who's listed first. You're going by who has the most numbers. Right now, it's Willie Galt with 22. So kick returner one is going to be Willie Galt. Kick returner two in this situation is going to be Dennis Gentry. He had 18 returns. Whoops. All right. Punt returners. Same thing. It's not necessarily who's listed first. Here it is, but it's not necessarily the case. It's Ken Taylor. Okay. Ken Taylor. Uh, next is Keith Ortego. Keith I think his name is technically pronounced Ortigo. All right, I'm going to save, save my progress. Now, entering in numbers. And I will tell you that uh, when it comes to special teams, this game goes off of stats. So remember the trick I showed you with um, freezing a block, uh, freezing the top? I'm going to have to do that now. I'm going to scroll, and I'm going to show you why. Scroll to where it's where I have my mouse and where it's highlighted, where it says players, team, and all that. You want that to always stay in the top. So be sure you're on the View tab, Freeze Panes, Freeze Top Row. Now when I scroll up and down, that top row, row is always there. It's always there. So I can tell where I'm at. So I'm going to go to Kicker, Kevin Butler. I'm just putting in his stats right now. I'm going to scroll to the right, and you see where it says PAT percentage. Try to put that more in the middle. Okay, PAT percentage, where it's highlighted here, that's PAT percentage. 
that's his point that's his that's his extra point percentage pat point after point after try okay now if you get lost in this whole frame what player am i on you'll see on the left it highlights 279 and it highlights it's showing you where you are if i scroll all the way to the left okay i see that i'm on kevin butler so there's no confusion okay so i'm going back to his percentage well what is it well here's how we find out listed under kicking and punting 100% you can't list at 100% in this game the highest is 99 so I will enter 99 whoops put it in the wrong field control see that out right here he's 99 now average kickoff distance is what's highlighted this is was this was a statistic that did not exist until 1993 and I will show you if you are building let's do the 1993 Bears I'm just going to show you this as an example okay um, kicking and punting here's Kevin Butler actually still in the league I'm highlighting him if you go to the far right the last number he has kickoff average 60.3 yards Again, this was a statistic that wasn't kept until 1993, and we're building the 85 Bears. Well, there's no number to go off of, so what do you do? You could look at a historical comparison of what this player did, but what I do in this case is, by default, if I don't know, I make it a 60-yard average. 60-yard basically means you're kicking in the end zone, it's going to be a touchdown back, which is usually what happens. There's no right or wrong here, but... I'm going to go off of what typically happens. So I'm going to say his average kickoff, and you see again, if you lost what column, I'm going to say it's 60. Don't know if it's right or wrong. There's no, there's nothing to go off of. So I have to do something like this. Okay. Phil, get, go, let me get rid of the, uh, oh, also I want to show you something else since this is here. Um, one of the, the statistics, I'm going to click back on here, that you're going to get with a kicker is, um, uh, it's actually in reference to this average kickoff. You'll see Chris Gardaki for the, eight, for the um, 93 team. He's the punter, okay? It also shows that he kicked the ball off too, and he had an average of 59. Once in a rare while, you're going to run into a team that the field goal kicker doesn't kick off. It's the punter. Well, the way pro strategy football is built, the kicker is always kicking off in this game, period. That's just the way the engine is built. So what do you do if your kicker, there, if the kicker isn't one kicking off and it's a punter, in this case, what we're looking at again is the 93 Bears. Um, what do you do? And you will run into that. It's rare, but it will happen. Well, then all what I do is I just use the number that the punter did. So that at least that's a representation, representation of what the team itself did. So if Butler, in this case, never did kick off the ball, and it was Gardaki, the game engine still has Butler kicking off the ball. Well, you got to give him some kind of number. So, because Gardaki did kick off, hypothetically, and he's at 58.6, you round it up, it's 59. So, you would make the game say Kevin Butler, who really is Chris Gardaki in this case, had an average kick kickoff of 59 yards. At least you're historically accurate with the team if you're not accurate with which player did it. So, all right. Um, field goal percent. This is um, basically 0 to 19, 0 to 19. All right, well, let me get out of this. And we're back to the 85 Bears. Okay, 0 to 19, you can see field goals made and field goals attempted. He was 2 of 2. Well, what's 2 of 2? It's, it's 100%. Again, you can't do 100%, so you say 99. Okay. Stretch this out a little bit. Let me get off of this and stretch this out. See, field goal percent 18, 19 yards. It's basically at 0 to 99 percent. 
you see that there. It's basically 19 yards or shorter what the percentage is. Okay. So now I need to go back and be sure I'm doing Kevin Butler. And there's Kevin Butler. Okay. So I am putting in his information. And we already did uh, from this range. Now, once in a while you run into zero of zero at this short distance. The player never attempted to kick at this short distance. What you could do is you could do perhaps a 99, just assuming that this bird, go off the extra point numbers uh, and use that percentage. You could put in a 99. You could also base it on what they did at the next stage and have it equivalent to that or maybe slightly better. That's You're just going to have to do something because the game's asking you for a number that might not exist. So you're just going to have to do your best judgment on what to put in. All right, so next up is from 20 to 29. Okay, he's 13 to 13, 100%. Again, there's no 100, so that's 99. Uh, now, 30 to 39 range is this. As you can see, he's 13 to 14. Get out your calculator. 13 divided into 14 is 92.8. Round it up. So we will say he's 93%. 40 yards, 3 of 6. Well, I don't need a calculator. That's 50%. 50%. Okay. 50 plus. He didn't make anything. Zero. Okay. If you're going off of historical accuracy. Now, sometimes you might have 3 for 3 or even 5 for 5. Well, do you want this player to always make a field goal of that range? If you want to consider some realism aspect, you might cheat and say it's 75% or 80% or even 50% from that far away. Um, again, that's open to interpretation. Depends on how you want to enter it in. But we have a real number to go off of here. He was 0 for 2 at 50%, at 50 yards or more. So he's not going to make it. Now, I will tell you, even if you put that number in, at least with the existing game's engine, the game will tell you he has a 29% chance of making the field goal the game engine doesn't like a zero when it comes to field goal kicking so it kicks it up to 29 percent it's the way the engine is made i'm not going to put it on 29 percent in case this game's engine changes in the future i'm going to leave it at zero because that's what he actually did and again that's up to you but i'm telling you that you'll put in a zero and the game will say 29 percent it's just the way the engine is it's giving you some kind of chance now, here's something you're going to have to make a note of. Max field goal. What was his longest for that year? It is not listed at profootballreference.com. It is not listed. So what do you do? There is a website that does list it. And it's called footballdb.com. Short for football database. Okay. You can look up players, or you can look up teams. And there's an ad. I'll just close that. All right. And there's a player register. There's also a search function. I'm going to go Butler. Okay. And here are some Butlers. Uh, and we said this was Kevin Butler. Here he is, Kevin Butler. Click on him. All right. There's Kevin Butler. All right, we're looking at 1985. Oh, that was his first year. Close that. Okay, all I'm doing is it's going to have the same information you got off of Pro Football Reference. But I'm going to go to the long. What was his long? Right there, 46. We have an actual factual number for this player. Now, if you're unable to find this player, what you can do is this. If it doesn't come up on a search, sometimes it doesn't. You can go Kevin but whoops. Butler football db in google and here's a direct link to them sometimes especially with older teams that won't even work so what you could do is this i'm going to give you a, a workaround you can go 1985 bears you can put in the team roster football database okay chicago bears roster football database and here's their roster, okay? I'm just going to go by position versus alphabetical. 
and I'm going to scroll to the bottom, and there's Kevin Butler. And you get to the same menu. Sometimes football database can be finicky. And if that happens, try doing a Google search for the player name and football DB or the team name with the year, 1985 Bears roster football DB to eventually do an end around to eventually get to it. But as we noted, his long is 46. We're done with football database. So here we are is Max Fielgel, 46. That's historically correct. I'm going to save it. Okay, yes. Now, you're going to put in the kick returners, punt returners, the punter. Now, I'm going to scroll all the way to the left. You got kick returners, then the punter, then the punt returners. Okay? First two are kick returners. I'm going to crank this out. I'm just going to scroll all the way to the right because that's where it is. All right, average kick return. I'm on the first player. Okay, scroll back up to here, and we said it was Willie Galton, most number if you get lost. 26.2, we round it. 26, what was his long? His long was 99, okay, 99. He had one touchdown. You don't put in one for pro strategy football. It is... The percentage, you can see here, it's the percentage. All right. If you get lost, you can always arrow all the way back. I know I'm on the right player, but there's Willie Galt. All right. So what is 1 into 22? He had one return for touchdown out of 22 attempts. Okay. So I'm going to go 1 out of divided by 22, 4 Four and a half. Round it up. Five. Now, if you find that to be unrealistic and he's returning a bunch of kickoffs for touchdowns, bring it down. Because you, you run into situations where you've got a player that had 10 returns, and that's it, and had one touchdown. That's 10%. So you might have to fudge it to make it realistic. Otherwise, if that player is used a lot, they could have eight or nine punt returns or kick returns for touchdowns. That's up to you. But if you have a decent base to go off of numbers-wise, you can leave this 5, and that's what I'm going to do. So he's got a 5% chance of going the distance. Now, remember that was kick returner 1. Below him is kick returner 2. So let's go to kick returner 2, Dennis Gentry. 25.9 is 26. Okay, 26. What was his long? 94. 94, whoops, 94, and he had a touchdown out of 18 returns. This is one where you might have to fudge it. One divided into 18, it's actually six. It's up to you, but I'm going to go historical accurate here. Six percent of the time, he's returning a kickoff for a touchdown, okay? Next was the punter. I'm going to pass the punter right now because I'm still in the menu on the web page for kick and punt returns. Kick returner. Okay, all the way to the right are your kick returner numbers. A uh, punt returns, pardon me. Average punt return. First player was Keith Taylor. 7.9, we round it up to an 8. 21 was as long. Okay, 21. Touchdown. This is percentage, not number. It's a percentage. Well, he didn't have any. So it's a zero, it's just like kick returner. Now we already know the last player is punt returner two. So that would be Keith Ortigo, I believe is how they pronounce his name to be honest with you. 9.3, it's an average, so we'll say he did nine. Whoops, nine. Uh, long was 23, okay. And no touchdowns, 0%, okay. I'm going to save that. Now we're going to do the kicker, as in the punter. Okay? I'm going to scroll over, and it's just past the data of the field goal kicker. Okay? Average punt yards. Okay? So we are looking at Maury Buford. 42.2. I round it. 42. Percent coffin corner. 
there's no statistic for it. There is no statistic for it. You're just going to have to make up something. I'm just going to leave it as it is for right now for demonstration purposes. Percent blocked. Not the, num not the number, the percent. He did have a block punt, you can see here, out of 68 punts. So we'll go 1 into 68, 1 divided by 68. If you move the decimal over, that's 1.4%. Round it up or down. We're going to keep it as a 1 that's actually entered in there. We'll say 1% of the time. You have to round it. We'll go down to 1. Okay. Percent of kickoffs not returned. You could... You can leave it alone because to get the number, there's a way to do it in a way. I mean, you could say, you could look at it this way. You go down to your team total and opponent total. Okay, the opponent over here, opponent total, they, they excuse me, they did 40 yards that's what they allowed never mind um, there isn't really a number for it so there's no real way you, you might just have to make up something or just leave the default in there it's just what this game asked for there may not be a number for it, so and there's nothing available here and I don't think I can do and I haven't been able to do the math it depends on the, the era I'm not gonna get into all that I'm you're probably sitting there having your head spin um, so we'll go with average yards returned when a team punts the ball. That actually exists, and I'm going to show you where. If you go back up to kick and punt returns, above kicking and punting, go to the bottom where it says opponent total. This is, on average, this yards returned. When it's opponent total, it's what the Bears allowed. Above it is the Bears team total. They average 9.3 yards on a punt return. Okay, because we're going off of this up here, punt returns. But their opponents average 8.8. .8. Round that up. It's 9. So the Bears allow their opponents, on average, a 9-yard punt return. Finally, punt returns that the Bears allow for a touchdown. Again, that's there. Opponent total, 0. Bears didn't allow any punt returns for touchdowns, 0. Now, let's say it was 1. Well, there were 23 punt returns, okay? One into 23. I'm just making this up for demonstration. Whoops, do it again. One into 23 is, is point, it's 7.6. It would be 8% of the time, okay? That's a lot. So if you run into a situation like that, you might have to fudge it and give them a two or something because that's a lot of punts to be returned. This is what I was referring to. You have the number of punts that the Bears did, 68, and you see that their opponents returned 23 of the 68. You could divide one number into the other, and that would give you a number um, that would uh, tell you how many they returned. So... If you divide it into the each other, then it looks like it's roughly a third. I'm not going to do the math, but it looks like it's roughly a third. So that means a third were returned, but this is percent not returned. So I'm just making this up 66. So if I did the math, I'm not going to do it right now, but you get the point. Okay. All right. So I'll save that. Now you got to do the starting lineup. How do you do that? Okay. If you go to the team, let me get rid of this. We're back. We're still in the 85 Bears. If you scroll down, you will see something that says starters and roster. If you don't see it there, sometimes it appears in a menu up here. Um, and you have to kind of find it. You go starters and roster. Here's their starting lineup. Now, we're just going to put in what's listed for their offensive line so I will do that now and it's right in front of me okay so offensive left tackle I'm not doing anything but putting in names right now so it's Jim Covert below that for the left guard is Jimbo whoops I'm sorry 
he's Jimbo Covert. Okay. Then the offensive guard, you see here. And I'm just going to race down it. Mark Bortz. Center is J. Oops, J. Hilgen Berg. Offensive guard, right guard is Tom Thayer. And the right tackle is Keith Van Horn. All right. We're not going to do the substitutes yet. We're just going to get the starters. All right. Now, remember, this team's a 4-3. So it should be set up this way, and it basically is. So the defensive left end is Dan Hampton. The left tackle nose guard. But in this case, it's a 4-3. So it is the left tackle. You can see Steve McMichael. The right tackle is William Perry. The right end, defensive right end, is Richard Dent. Defensive line four, spare. We're not going to do them yet. We go to the linebackers. Now they used a 4-3, so they're only going to be three listed on the starting setup. Right outside, outside linebacker for the game is going to be the left Pardon me. Left outside linebacker for pro strategy football. The game is going to be left linebacker uh, listed on the team. So that's going to be Otis Wilson. Right outside linebacker is going to be the right linebacker listed, which is Wilbur Marshall. Left inside linebacker or middle linebacker. In this case, it's the middle linebacker. As you can see here, it's Mike Singletary. Okay, we don't know the right outside linebacker because of the what's listed here. We bypass that now, and we bypass linebacker for the backup because it's not listed yet. We'll get to that. Now you've got your safeties. You've got your secondary. Left cornerback, okay, Mike Richardson. Your free safety, it's all the way in the bottom here, Gary Fensick. The game wants a strong safety, and the database here on the web is Dave Duerson. Right cornerback listed here, Leslie Frazier. Okay, you have the starting lineup. I'm going to blow this up. Okay, so you've put in names. That's where we're at. Now, we got to fill in these blanks of these other names. We need to find an offensive player that's an offensive lineman. If you go back to the starters and roster, you scroll down, it's going to list everybody. So what you need to do is you need to find somebody. You have to dig around. You have to find somebody who is uh, an offensive lineman. And you have to... Um, put that name in for now. And I'm going to cheat to cut to make it a little faster. Um, Frederick. All right. Because you have to sit here and you have to go by, because um, it may not show their position. You have to nitpick through it. All right. And I'm just going to make it simpler. This has already been done. So in this case, we'll make and there's going to be more than one player. You have to use your best judgment. Sometimes you might go by years of experience because there's no statistics or data on who's better, who's worse, or anything like that, or who is necessarily a backup. Now, you might find some old databases that might have it, but you might not. But we're going to say Andy, Fred, Rick. Now, we're on to defensive linemen. Here's what I like to do. Um, if you go back to statistics... I'm going to look at the players for defense and fumbles. And I'm going to look at, okay, who uh, force fumbles. There's something to go off of. Uh, interceptions uh, and sacks over here. And you're going to find, out of the players that are not starters, you can make a note, you know, who had more statistics. Who had more sacks interceptions, stuff like that, because you obviously see that those players are playing more. And you will put those players as the backups first, judging off of 
the num those numbers of sacks and interceptions and, and that kind of thing. Because obviously, well, not necessarily obviously, but they have more of an impact of a game, so you can stick them in. <coughs> and they may very well have had um, more um, play time. So that's, been, that's what I do. You go to starters and roster and go back to the, to the starters. Now, I'm going to cut to the – I'm just going to show what's been done already uh, because these have already been weeded through. And I'm actually going to just enter in, whoops, for sample's sake, what we've already done. So we know it's Hardestein. It's Mike Hardestein. Okay. We determine that, Mike Hardestein, for the backup defensive lineman. Then now, again, they use a 4-3. We have to find two linebackers. So what what we do is, well, which linebacker had the most interceptions or sacks, and then the second most interceptions and sacks, who probably had the most play time. So in this case, it looks like it's Thrift and Rivera. So we will go Cliff Thrift. Now, again, we've already done this. I'm just making it uh, faster for demonstrations purposes. Cliff Thrift. And then we said it was, oops. No, Ron Rivera, okay. Same thing with the corners of the secondary. But we've already gone through all that and uh, determined. Uh, one, two, three, four. Taylor, Phillips, and Gale. So there's Ken Taylor and Phillips. And Gale. Okay. I'm going to save it. All right. We have done the 85 Bears, their names. What we've done is the overall team ratings, all their names, and their respective positions. And if they have stats, they're in. Now, there are two other things you need to do put in their personal information and ratings. I'm just going to do this. I'm not going to go through them all, but this is what I'm going to give you an idea of what's involved. Okay. I'm going to show you how to put this information in. All right. Let's start with Jim McMahon. We're going to scroll. Now, remember on the starters and rosters, the first thing it showed you were the starters. I'm just going to go to roster and I'm going to look up Jim McMahon. And I'm going to highlight them by clicking. It highlights in yellow. Okay. Let me move this up. Jim McMahon. Where did he go to college? BYU. His jersey number is next. It was nine. Years of field we skip. Bypass it. Go to age. He was 26. What was his draft round? First round. And he was the fifth pick. Draft overall, fifth pick. Bam. Jim McMahon's dad is in. Short of his ratings. Done. Okay. Steve Fuller. Okay. Steve Fuller went to Clemson. He was number four. Skip year. He was 28, uh, he's, uh, he's 28 years old. And he was the first round in the 23rd overall pick. Okay. So save that. And his data is in. Now, you don't have to put this data in with the exception of age if you're playing career play with this game. The reason is this is all um, bubblegum card kind of trivial information. Will it matter in the game? No, it does not matter. It's all just for fun to get a history of the player. With the exception of age, according to the programming, you do need age if you're playing career play because this will age the player appropriately. Maybe the player is young and gets better, and with good statistics from the season before, the player's ratings will go up. Bad rate, bad statistics, the ratings will go down. The player's in his 30s or something, then it takes that into account and starts to age the player to the point where the player may retire. That's the only one of these fields that you want, but it's for career play so that the game will have an idea of 
the age of this player and how to adjust the ratings year after year. The rest is just trivial. Now I will say, I'm gonna look at this as an example. Leslie Frazier, I know this player is a defensive back. There he is right here, Leslie Frazier. You may run into, you're gonna run into this sometimes. I'm gonna put in his information. He went to Alcorn State. You can abbreviate or type out state. Jersey number was 21. And jersey number's on the far left. I don't think I made that clear. Skip the year. His age is here, is 26. Draft round and draft, it's blank on the web. What that means is this player was a free agent. So what you do is you put in zeros. Zero for the draft round, zero for the draft overall. Player was a free agent, wasn't drafted. So there you are. So you will do this for every single player. Okay? Now, finally, it's ratings. And you will notice, look at all these ratings. All right, they start under durability. Okay? You have all these ratings or statistics. Okay, and I'm highlighting them in gray. The majority of them, for the majority of players, you will not need. It is the way the database is set up that everybody has these numbers. But the majority of these numbers, players will not use. So how do you tell what a player will use? Okay. If you call up the game, uh, and this is one that was already built, click on the play. Actually, you will see it all listed here. For quarterbacks, uh, they need durability, strength, quickness, speed, fumble percentage, leadership, readability, meaning a quarterback able to read, you know, the defense coming at them. Completion, these, there are three numbers, and the numbers are short, medium, and long. And these are ratings. All of these are ratings. Avoid interception, short, medium, and long. That's why there are three. So the way this is, and this was done by uh, someone else who built this team. Um, completion ratings, or did I get, did I call this one up myself? Um, it's on a scale of one to nine. Okay, McMahon is six basically all around completion, and he's average person when it comes to avoiding interceptions. It's five. That's an opinion, but the three numbers are short, medium, and long. How well he's able to read. His leadership ability, how often he fumbled the ball, that's a percentage, not a rating. Everything else is rating. And that's all that Jim McMahon needs. That's all he needs. He doesn't need any other information. Okay? Running backs, and you can jot all this down. Running backs, uh, durability, strength, quickness, speed, fumble percentage, leadership, receiving ability, and stamina. Now, what's the difference between quickness and speed? According to the programmer, quickness is if a player is getting the ball from behind the scrimmage and they've got to run around the outside, like a sweep or an off tackle, to get to the outside. That's their quickness rating from a 1 to 9. Speed is just straight up down the field, straight down the field speed. So that's what the difference is. Quickness is to be able to get around the line. Speed is to take off. Okay? So, uh, fullbacks have the same ratings as the halfbacks. Tight ends have the same ratings as the running backs except for stamina. Wide receivers, same as the tight ends. Now, offensive linemen. Uh, they go by durability, run block, and pass block. And again, these are all in scales of 1 to 9. So you would want to sit there and jot down because you don't need to put in every single number for every single player. It's a waste of time. Uh, defensive players. Uh, you've already put in this information, their position, their age. Uh, for defensive linemen, their durability how well they are on the run on a scale of 1 to 9, it's one number, and how they are on a pass on a scale of 1 to 9, it's one number. It's all it is for defensive linemen. Linebackers include those, but also have the addition of 
defense. They have run defense and pass defense, which is basically kind of the same as uh, versus runs and pass rush. And then they have reaction. How are they? How well are they on a scale of one to nine at reacting and what's going on with the play? All opinion. All opinion. No two ways around it. You can get your opinion off of stats if stats exist. It's all opinion, and you can argue it till you're blue in the face. Linebackers. Okay, we just did them. And uh, defensive backs, same as the linebackers. So you only need four sets of numbers for them. Because, again, you've already done, well, five. You've already done the age. Okay? Kickers. Uh, we already did all the special teams. Stats. Kickers are all stats. Okay? Punter. All stats. You already did it. Kick returners, punt returners. All stats. You already did it. You're set. Okay? So, you want to enter in numbers. Now, I just know this off the top of my head. Durability and stamina, opinion. You can make it on a scale of 1 to 9 what you want for the quarterback. Strength, how far the quarterback can throw the ball. Speed, how fast the quarterback is running. Like if it was Randall Cunningham, it probably be a 9. Okay? If it's Dan Marino, it probably be a 1. He can't scramble. Randall Cunningham can uh, quickness, same thing, getting around the line, okay? If they're going to run, if they're going to do a sweep. Fumble percentage, that's a number. Fumble percentage is a number. It's just a percentage. Receiving, I have just found out that this game does have the ability of having the quarterback receive a ball. The quarterback can be an eligible receiver on a halfback pass. I did not know that. I, and I will tell you right now, I have I just left whatever the rating happened to be in for the quarterback for receiving. So it could be great, it could be terrible. I didn't know that until the other day. <laughs> so I don't have a number per se for a quarterback receiving the ball. All right, here we are, short, medium, and long. Okay, short, medium, and long uh, quarterback rating on a scale of 1 to 9. How well they complete a pass short, medium, or long. It's opinion. You can go off the statistics, it's your opinion. Uh, short, medium, and long interception. The lower the number, the more likely they are to throw an interception. The higher the number, the less likely they are to throw an interception. So you can make it whatever you want. You can go by, like Tom Brady in um, 2016 had like four interceptions the whole regular season. He's going to be a nine. I don't care if it's short, medium, or long. He's going to be almost never gets picked off. I mean, that's kind of obvious. Um, so, But it's all opinion. Quarterback being able to read, read what the defense has in front of him, that's opinion. Leadership ability, that's opinion. But I mean, somebody like Tom Brady, great leader. Great leader, okay? You don't have to worry about run block, pass block, and all that. I, I already went through all that to, ex to explain that to you. That's that's quarterback. So you do that for the quarterbacks. Running backs, and you, you're just going to sit there and put in ratings. And you're going to do that. Um, you, you should write down all these and uh, you're going to do your ratings appropriately for what you think. It's all opinion, all of it. So, <clears throat> so you're going to have to sit there and figure it out. So if I have a, a run block or a pass block rating for a quarterback, it's not going to matter. One or nine, it makes zero difference. The game doesn't use it. It's listed there because it's a generic template for everybody. You don't need it. Okay. So you're going to sit there and you're going to go through and do all the ratings. Now, let's just say I'm done. I finished this. I finished, okay? I'm not going to do the ratings. It's all opinion. But you've built your team, and you're ready to go. Here's what you do, okay? You're going to go into Pro Strategy Football. Let me get out of this. All right, you go back to Editor and Mods. You go in. You're going to select down in the middle, bottom, Import CSV. Click that. It'll take a moment. And it's going to show in that import export folder I showed you CSV, uh, all the CSV files you have. And I got a bunch of junk in here because I've been making teams. Um, so I'll even show you. Uh, what I'm working on right now is it's a C is two. Whoops, I'm not going to do it. It's 2001 in the middle here where I'm moving my mouse. I'm building the 2001 season, and I've already exported a CSV after building the template for the league. And I actually today I started entering team data. Uh, but let's go to 1985. We have that 1985 fictional one we created. 
um, Bears test. Here it is, 1985 Bears test in the middle, two conferences, okay? And I'm going to import. I'll say yes. And it says one league, two conferences, two teams. That's what we were toying around with. I'll say okay. I'm going to go save league. It's going to ask me what I want to name, and it normally goes by the default, the name of the uh, CSV file. We'll go 1985 Bears test. It already exists with the name because we had built it. Remember, we had built it on that template in the game. I can replace it or I can name something different. Just for the demonstration purposes, I'm going to leave it as is. I have now copied over the league file template I made with this data from the CSV. It's that simple. So if I go back and I go back into editor and mods, I'm going to go to 85 test league. All right, uh, here it is, test. We'll go edit league, we'll look at it. Here's 85, and that's what we entered in. There's all the player's stuff. We didn't put in the, the ratings. We did do the statistics. So if we go back, whoops. Okay, here we go. Kevin, but these statistics we entered in, okay? Um, and this is what's entered in. <clears throat> So that's all historically correct, okay? Um, the team interview, all this other stuff, we already did that. Uh, now, if we click on Jim McMahon, we'll see what we entered in. He went to BIU, first round, fifth overall pick, jersey number nine. He was 26 years old. We didn't put in the ratings. Remember, we just bypassed it just for demonstration purpose, purposes. Excuse me. So this is what the, the CSV originally had contained in it, okay? Um, Steve Fuller, same thing. We entered all this in. Now we didn't do Peyton. We didn't do. We only did a couple of examples. So that's all blank because we didn't enter it in. We didn't put in his college or anything like that. So that's not right. But because we had a stopping point, uh, we did do the defensive back as a sample. Um, and was it Phillips? Who did we do? <clears throat> we did Frazier. Okay, and there's, remember, we said Jersey 21, age 26, round taken zero, overall pick zero, because if it's not listed on the Pro Football Re Reference pet webpage, that information, that means that this person was a free agent, and they picked him up as a free agent. So that's why it's zero. That's actually correct. Okay, so you've got your information in, and I'm going to go into a quick play and I'm actually going to switch league to that just as a goof and these numbers these rings are not going to be right but I'm just going to show you here's the 85 Bears test okay new quick game and it comes up I didn't put in the name of the championship you can do that in the file uh, but okay there's uh, we'll, we'll play as the Bears and there it is, and here's your work, and you can go to Scout, and there's New England, and here's Chicago, and you put this information in. Remember, home win, they were undefeated, so the highest rating is a 9. Here's 9. They lost one game on the road. We made it an 8. There it is, 8, as an example. Okay. Um, so I will say expert mode, and I will receive, and... This is what you created. You literally created the 85 Bears. Okay? So there's 38. Willie Galt. There he goes. Oh, is he going to score? <laughs> Out of the gate. Willie Galt touchdown. Our Red Sox fan must be going crazy. Okay? But there we are. How about that? Now, um, Fuller, remember, he was 100% kicking a field goal. But the game will only accept a maximum of 95, 90, 99. If you look where it says field goal percentage in the top center, 99 chance. We entered that in. Okay. Full of the hold. The game by default has the backup quarterback hold. And we're using the rules that we stated, 85 rules. They're kicking off from the two. So that's correct. And here's Butler for the extra point. Okay. Done. All right, you get the point. I'm just going to get out of this. Uh, all right, so there is is how you make a team 
for pro strategy football and judging by again all these other games this is um, NFL challenge and here is uh, micro league football 2 and this is NFL pro league football 95 and here is second and 10 you can see that there are a billion different ways with all these games to put in information and it, it can make you rip your hair out. Um, different games want different information. Not only information matters per se, like the, the draft round and order, the college uh, doesn't matter for pro strategy football. That's just for cosmetics. It's, it adds to the fun, sure, if you wanted to do a little historical uh, understanding of the of the game of the of the given players sure uh, not necessary but I mean if I'm in there typing it in the information's right in front of me I go ahead and put it all in there so and I'm human I make mistakes I might have put the wrong school or put the wrong jersey number or whatever so um, but you have an idea of, of what it takes to build a team and um, it can be a lot of fun once you get over the hump of, oh my goodness, how in the world do I do all this? Uh, you'll get into a rhythm and uh, you'll find yourself cranking them out a little faster than you would uh, being a, a novice, being doing it for the first time. Uh, there's, and if you, if you build teams or you build a league or you build leagues for any sport, baseball, doesn't matter, and you offer them up for free, I will tell you, that you will occasionally encounter people who are going to criticize you. And it's usually nitpicky stuff. Um, unless you are way, way off. And you know what? You're a human being. I'm a human being. I'm sure I've made plenty of mistakes in these games, in these teams. Uh, I'm a human. And I miss stuff. And oversights. Stuff like that. Sure. And you, I'm not being critical, but you will too. It happens. Um, be prepared to receive some, and I'll give you an example. Uh, when I made pro strategy football, uh, excuse me, when I made um, um, front page sports football teams, I had somebody complain to me about the 68 Jets. Uh, they said that the rating for Joe named the speed was too low. And I said, and again, it's a rating from 1 to 100. And I said, well, I mean, I took into consideration his statistics, and he had bum knees. And this person agreed with me, but said, but yeah, but his ratings are still too low. It wasn't that slow. So you're going to run into that. Um, and I know, it, and again, when these teams are offered by us modders, we're doing this the best we can with the information that's available. And believe me, we hunt down information because we try to make these historically accurate as possible. Um, when you get it, if you find something you don't like, if you find a mistake, tell us, and we'll look into fixing it. If it's just a flat-out mistake, opinion-oriented, well, there's nothing stopping from you from boosting a player's rating here or bringing it down there. Please do it. Go ahead. Uh, we just want you to have fun playing these games. We have fun baking them. We have fun tinkering with them. After we pull our hair out, we just want you to have the same kind of fun. Bottom line. So do what you want with them um, for your own private use. Because once you download it on your computer, this is, you know, freeware. You know, we're not asking for anything. We just do this for the love of it. We want you to have fun. If you want to make a minor modification here or there, go ahead. You want to take teams from five or six different leagues and you want to build your own master league? Go ahead. Enjoy yourself. That's what it's all supposed to be about. Have fun and tell your friends about it. Maybe post Facebook uh, or uh, YouTube videos. So, um I hope I gave you an idea of what's involved in building just one team. I mean, look how long it took to do the 85 Bears, and we're building entire seasons. Um, but we're we're so used to where everything's placed in the database of the numbers and how we uh, – I, I was doing it very slow for demonstration purposes, but we end up cranking these out a little bit faster than that because we, we got into such a – I think I speak for the other models. We got into such a rhythm that we can. So um, – Hopefully, in a perfect world, we will have every season available. 
We have 1948 already available, the AAFC and the NFL. And we have 1950 to 1998 already built, 99's under construction, and we did finish 2000. And we finished the existing 2020 season, end of season. We hope to have everybody, the 1948, and then everything from 1950 to this season available before the release of the 2022 version. We're not promising that, but we hope to have everything built for the 2021 game. And then we will have the fun of converting everything from 2021 to 2022. Um, and uh, you can continue your enjoyment of playing. So um, I want to thank everybody for making, uh, who jo joined in, even for two seconds. Uh, and uh, uh, enjoy yourselves today. Have fun watching the game. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, you can leave me a note in the YouTube uh, uh you can post a, a question in YouTube uh, discussion area, and I'll try to answer it the best I can. So I'm going to sign off now. I want to thank everybody for joining. Hopefully you understand what we go through. <laughs> and have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.